one of the most profound pieces of research that's come to light in the end, it, 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 and it came from people working in a, a very dusty corner of academia called social epidemiology. These are people who look at trends and statistics about how society is changing. And two academics in particular, Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickett, wrote a book called The Spirit Level. And in The Spirit Level, what they found was an extraordinarily high correlation between levels of inequality and a wide range of social ills. Everything to do with problems with health, problems in the education system. Um, across the board, they saw that where countries have higher levels of social inequality, a wide range of social problems were worse, and the cost to society of those problems was worse. And what they saw was that in countries that were more equal, those social bills, those social costs went down. So in a world in which we're told almost daily that we can no longer afford to have the things that we feel we need, like an education system, like a, like a health system, and that we're having cuts pretty much across the board, it's worth remembering that perhaps possibly one of the most effective economic innovations we could have now to get society and the economy back on track is measures to reduce inequality. I think if I was young and I was campaigning on the streets today for a fairer, better and more useful banking system, I'd be a bit confused because I'd be thinking back to the riots that took place on the streets of Britain several weeks ago and I'd be thinking about quite rightly how a lot of the violence was condemned but how that was a dark reflection of the sense of exorbitant excessive privilege displayed by MPs on expenses scandals or bankers on ridiculous bonuses and I'd be thinking well here am I trying to do something that the political establishment has failed to do produce a useful effective fair financial structure and now I'm being kettled I'm being intimidated I'm having every part of the establishment from the church to large parts of the press telling me that I'm doing the wrong thing. And I'd be sitting there thinking, well, what should I do? Especially given that the most recent figures on youth unemployment have shown us that young people across Europe are disproportionately represented among both the unemployed and the working poor. So I think the one thing I would say on the 25th anniversary is that I couldn't be happier that the Occupy movement has established and spread across large parts of the, of the wealthy, industrialised world and is addressing issues which the political establishment and also, I might add, the business press has fundamentally failed to address. It took a comedian in America, John Stewart on The Daily Show, to point out that not a single part of the mainstream business media called the banking crisis before it happened or called for reforms of the banking system at a time when it could have made a difference. So thank you to the Occupy movement. Keep at it. You're putting at the heart of the political agenda the issues which are most important for us at this moment in time. Let's see some real change.